My name is Marilyn, and I'd like to tell you my story. I grew up in a very traditional Catholic family. We did all the usual Catholic things. I had loving parents. I was fortunate enough to marry uh, a Catholic man. We've raised six children, tried to do our best as parents and to raise them in the Catholic Church. I was privileged beyond belief to, to be a, um, a stay-at-home mother, so I was able to volunteer for many organizations, and I spent many, many hours in the pro-life movement, working my way up to the national level, being very, very involved serving in the way I thought God probably wanted me to serve. In fact, I thought I was a really good Catholic, and I thought God must be pretty proud of me for all the things that I was doing. That was pride. And then in a course of about three years, my life changed dramatically. I was diagnosed with a medical condition, debilitating progressive disease. It was not something to look forward to. It was very discouraging. And it sapped me of all my energy. That had been one of my, my big gifts was energy overflowing. It disappeared. Then I entered into a very difficult relationship issue, very painful, and that took a lot, of, a lot of prayer to work through. The third thing, I, re I received a phone call from a woman I scarcely knew asking me if I would help her organize a bus trip to bring students, teenagers, to a conference in Steubenville, Ohio. And I thought, sure, I love to do that kind of stuff. She didn't know how to do it. She wanted my help, why not? We filled the bus drove 12 hours overnight to Franciscan University of Steubenville. And I walked into the tent, 2,000 teenagers there. Personally, I felt broken and physically exhausted. And I heard praise and worship music for the first time, music that actually talked to God. It filled me in a way I, I, I was amazed what it did for me. My hands were drawn over my head with, without my real permission. They just went up in praise. And I was filled with the gift of freedom that I'd never felt before. I, I didn't ever sense freedom in my life. I was a very controlled person. The freedom it brought me was amazing. On the Saturday evening, when the priest passes through the tent holding the Blessed Sacrament to bless people. You could actually feel the Spirit, the Holy Spirit moving. There, there was a sense of power moving through the tent, something I, I will never understand. It was amazing. And you could hear noises. You could hear laughter. You could hear gifts of the Spirit. You could see people resting in the Spirit on the ground. And I remember so clearly hanging onto the chair in front of me with both hands, saying, Okay, Lord, whatever you want for me, that's fine. Do what you want, Lord. I give you permission. It was a surrender prayer, although I didn't know the name of it at that point. The Blessed Sacrament passed by me. I felt nothing. I was disappointed. And I thought, well, I guess I'll have to wait for another time to receive the Holy Spirit. Maybe he's just here for the teenagers. How little I knew. Back home, three days later, I received in the mail, unsolicited, a brochure from the Oratorian Fathers in Toronto, inviting me to a catechism refresher course. Really? <laughs> Where did that come from, I wonder? God was at work. I was hooked. I went to the course, relearned some of the catechism I hadn't even thought about for 20 years at that point. Very soon after that, I started going to morning Mass. I was being drawn in. The Holy Spirit was at work in my life. An adoration chapel opened in my town, and I was encouraged to go and, and spend time with Jesus a little bit at a time. Jesus had this plan for me um, that was just amazing. He has filled me with so much peace he has given me opportunities that I could never have imagined to grow in my faith, to experience things, mission trips to Europe, 
um, people who are just so, so in love with him that it's catching. He has filled me with the peace beyond all understanding. I heard that phrase many times. It didn't mean anything to me. Now I live with it, and I'm so very, very grateful for all that the Holy Spirit has done in my life. That was 27 years ago. It was only when I looked back that I realized that during the conference, I had asked for energy because I was exhausted, and the energy came. I never saw that as a gift. It wasn't what I was expecting. I'd been expecting to rest in the Spirit, and when that didn't happen, I figured nothing had. And as I continue to look back over my journey, time and time again, I realize the number of times that God has continued to heal me in different ways. The disease that I was diagnosed with is gone. There is no trace of it in me anymore. That's a major healing, and it was done very gradually. Nothing has come into my life as a very uh, specific moment of healing, but I know that it's been happening all along, part of God's plan to draw me closer and closer to Him. And I continue to grow. I continue to be stretched. His latest little nudge was for Encounter Ministries, where He's forming me more and more into the person He wants me to be. I am so in love with Him and so grateful for His presence in my life. And my prayer for you is that you would open your minds and your hearts. Give that little surrender prayer. Lord, if you're out there, come show me. I want you in my life. I need you in my life. I give my life to you. You will never, ever regret doing that. God bless you. I want defense. I righteousness. Thank you, Marilyn, for this beautiful story of the encounter that you had with the Lord. He um, totally delights in you, and I just sense that He wants to bless you even more. He delights in you, and He says, How precious are you, Marilyn? You are a beautiful daughter of a king who wants always more for your life. He wants to bless you, showering you with all the gifts that He has in store for you. His infinite mercy, His infinite love over you. Do you want to give God permission to play a role within your life? Will you open your heart and say yes to this King who has so much more to offer you and He wants you to go deeper and closer. He wants to draw you near to his heart and you will see how touched you will be. We thank you and we expect in faith that he is at work today. Christ our King. Lord, I need you.
to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and say I need